Hello, welcome to Technical Founders. My name is Carlos Lara, software engineer and entrepreneur. And in this video, we'll be learning about C Sharp syntax and variables with Xamarin Forms. This video is a continuation from the previous video, Introduction to Mobile Development with Xamarin Forms. It's useful if you watch that video, but it's not absolutely necessary. Now, we're, we created our first app and we're starting with it here. It's just one page with a, a text here that says, Hello Universe from Technical Founders. And in the last video, we used both XAML and C Sharp just to give us a lot more flexibility in developing our application. But for the purposes of this video, we'll only be using C Sharp. So I rewrote um, the code that we've written in XAML before, and it's all in C Sharp. So the first thing we'll be looking at is, is syntax. And the first thing is C Sharp is a case sensitive language. For example, the public partial class these keywords here are case sensitive. So for example, if you were to do partial with a capital L at the, at the end, you see you get errors. So it's case sensitive. Keywords are always uh, lower case. And I also identifiers are, are case sensitive. So for example, here, the constructor method for the, um, for the page here, the test app page method, you see starts with a capital T and every word in there starts with a with a capital letter. Now, we, if we were to do, for example, test app page with a lowercase t and try to use that somewhere else, we would get error, errors as well. It's not it's not the same at all. So that's that's just very important to keep in mind and to stay consistent with that. The next thing about syntax is the use of curly braces, as you see here. So curly braces are used to open and close classes, methods, functions, etc. So for example, here, even the namespace, so the namespace, which is where the app is, test app here, opens and closes, and everything is put inside whatever the content of that. So for example, there's only one class here in this namespace, and we and that's our page. We call it the test app page, which inherits from content page. And it has, again, curly braces, open and close, and inside we put whatever the class contains, its properties, methods, etc. So here we only have one one method here, which is the constructor method that creates an instance of our page class. And again, curly braces, opens and closes, and we put everything everything inside. And that's that's just um, you'll see it's just very nice and very very visual. It's very easy to follow where th where things start, where they end, and just to keep track of everything. It's just a nice design of the C sharp language. The other very important thing is that there's always a semicolon at the end of a statement. So semicolons here in C-sharp, as you see them here, signal the end of a statement. So for example, here, um, actually this brings us to the next uh, part, which is variables. Here I'm declaring a variable called test label. And the, the first thing here, this um, um, identifier, this keyword here is just uh, the, the, the type of this object. So I'm creating a new label, a new instance of the label class, and this is the constructor method. And this is the, the type of this label. This is just the name, the, the identifier for this object, and this is the type. So this is an object of type label. And this is called explicit typing in, in C Sharp. So uh, I'm, I'm declaring a variable explicitly by explicitly saying what is the type. Now, alternatively, you can also, instead of saying the actual type here, you can just say, use the keyword var, which is short for variable. But var is, is called implicit the, um, declaration of a, of a variable here. So because of the right-hand side of this statement, Xamarin Forms already knows that this is a, a label. Uh, an instance of the label class implicitly, that this object is a type label. And if I hover over it, you see it says label, as, as we had before. And you can do either either of the two, both work uh, just fine. This is easier to read. It's a little bit better for readability of the code and for other cases. But for the most part, we C Sharp developers use var a lot because, again, it's just very simple to, uh, to see based on the right-hand side um, what, what it is, and it's just very flexible. You don't, you don't have to use different kinds of, of, of names, of, of data type names. You can just use um, var here. So that this would be an example. Uh, these will be examples of explicit versus implicit um, declaration 
of, var of variables here. So here, in the previous video, we created our label in the XAML file in here, partial class again, just means there's, for this page, there's two parts to it. There's a C-sharp file and a XAML file, but in this, in this video, we'll only be using C-sharp. And you have the flexibility. Again, if you want to do everything in C-sharp, you can. And here um, we are. So we're declaring our label. Again, a label is like a text box that just holds some, some text. And here the app is showing Hello Universe from Technical Founders, as you know, in the last video. And it will only be running on iOS just to keep things um, simple and relatively quick. And once you declare the variable the, or instantiate the object, create a new instance of this class, so you have this label object, now you can set properties. Now the way that you set properties is you, you have the name, test label, and here Visual Studio get, um, picks it up, so test label. So you have that, and then you use a dot. That's part of the C-sharp syntax. So when you want to access members of this object, for example, properties or methods, you use the dot. And as you see, the dot brings up methods, properties, events, etc. So M is method, P is property, E is event, and you have these events. So we want the text, and there we see text, which is a property. And as we can see here, this is this text property is a is of type string, so it'll take a string. So what a string is, um, is is a one of the .NET, one of the C sharp fundamental data types, um, and in fact, so text equals, and let's let's do well the same. Let's just copy this one right here, which is already implicitly a string. Xamarin forms knows that this is a string because it's inside quotation marks. So a string, a string is just a collection of characters. It's just a string of characters. That's why it's called a string, because it's a string of characters. And so we can see it's a string of characters. And for C and in C sharp we, we put a string in between quotation marks. Here and always we have the the semicolon at the end to to mark the, the end of the statement. So now for this text property of our label object, we have assigned this particular value. Now we can we can define this separately. We can say string sentence, just the name, it doesn't really matter. Assign equal um, is, I'm just gonna copy this. And this, this doesn't mean equals, this means this is the assignment operator. So in C-sharp there are operators, there's the addition operator, the subtraction operator, the equality operator, and so on. So you have mathematical operators that, that, do, that do things here. So for example, here this equal sign means that this for this string variable called sentence, we're assigning this specific value, which is hello universe from technical founders. Now here in, in test label.txt, instead of what we call hard coding the value, we can just remove this and we can just say sentence and close. And as you can see, sentence here is it has this value. So the, the text property of the of our label object will automate will be a will will have this this value. And if we actually let's just stop running and let's run it again we'll see that that, not, that nothing changes, that we still get that, that text in our application. See, Hello Universe from Technical Founders. So this will be a string. And again, we can also, instead of doing uh, strong typing here, what we call actually declaring the data type, we can just say var implicitly declare this variable. And again, Xamarin forms just from, you know, the quotations and the string of characters, it just knows that it's a string. If we come over, we see it's a string. So beautiful. So that would that would that would be our label. Now our la in Xamarin Forms, when we create create an object like, like like this, and we put it in in an app page, you need uh, an a container in between. We call it a layout. So views. So a label, for example, or a button. So for example, button test button. I'm just declaring a new button. Let's equal the new button. So I'm creating a new instance of the button class. This is the constructor method. So it's another. So it's a button. So the label, button, image, etc. in Xamarin forms are called views, and views have to be put inside containers, and the containers go inside the page. So here I have actually de uh, declared a variable of type stack layout, 
and I called it test layout. This is just the identifier, the name, and I grant new stack layout. So I'm creating a new instance of the stack layout. And these are just properties just to center the stack layout to the center of the of the page. And here, um, I'm doing the same thing as I did before from the C-sharp syntax. So you have test layout, and it's right there. Visual Studio picks it up. Dot will bring up the properties, methods, and events. So we want the children property. Children property is a property that contains the views. Dot again. And then we have now that property itself has methods and properties. And you can keep going. Uh, so for example, you have the add. And as you can see here, um, it, it adds a view. Add. And then you see, it requires a view. The, the Whenever you have a a variable inside a method like that, we call it a parameter. So the method needs a parameter, and the parameter is a, a, is a view. So it can be either our test label, it, or it can be our button. And so it, so view, so label and button, and image, etc. Uh, in Xamarin forms, they all inherit from view. So as long as you're inheriting from view, um, this method will will take that in. So we want to add test label as we had it already already here and we also want to add our button and by the way for our button let's just um, add some some variables actually let me move this um, just so it's a little bit easier to, easier to read mm, okay so we have our button and let's actually declare it implicitly just to get in the habit this is just how we how we do things so again test button dot to get the properties and methods so we want the text and let's just use the assignment operator here and again text the same as test label it, just, it takes a string so for the text let's just say click me and close it with a semicolon always and again string is in quotation marks um, so test layout which is our stack layout right and when you put your when you click it it's all the Reference all the places where it's referenced are highlighted. So dot children, same thing. We just want to add another one. Add, and this time we'll add our button. So we'll add our test button, and it's right there. Okay, and then at the very end, the page itself we call test app page here has properties itself. Everything has properties and methods. So this just meant just refers to an instance of this class. To, to this instance. So for this instance, for this app page, I want the content property in this. You don't you don't need this. It's just, it's easier to see. You can just say the content, which is a property, and it's, again, inside the curly braces. It, and you assign the layout itself. So in the page, you assign the layout to its content property. And then the layout is the one that actually contains the children views, like buttons, labels labels, etc. So let's actually, let's stop and let's run the application again. And let's just make sure that we've added our our properties here, our, our variables. Okay, again, we have Hello Universe from Technical Founders and we have our button and you can click it. And since we didn't add an event or anything to the button, it doesn't do anything, but you can see it's a button and we've added it to the, to the children um, of the stack layout. And the stack layout is the most common type of layout you'll use in Xamarin Forms. And in, in, in later videos will also come to, we'll take a look at other layouts, especially the grid, which is extremely powerful. But for now, so we've, we've taken a look at C-sharp syntax, how it works, how we access, how we declare variables, how we access properties, methods, etc. cetera, in those, in those instances, in those, in those objects, and how we add them to our, to our layout and how we add that layout to the page itself and here and we're a little bit closer we're added another we've added another block here to our application and we we can keep doing this and just keep building a more complex application and in the next videos we'll we'll keep going and expanding on this so thank you for watching um i hope you liked it if you have any questions any thoughts any comments please leave them at the bottom also please subscribe again i'm putting out the videos at least once a week so you'll be the first to be notified and i'll see you next time